I come from the University of California, specifically my home base is UCSF in San Francisco, but I'm the chief data scientist for the entire UC health system. So we have this umbrella across all six academic health centers, UCSF, UCLA, Irvine, Davis, San Diego, and Riverside. And I'm gonna argue we're probably the only one in the country that has all six academic health centers sharing like we do. Treated 9 million patients over the past 11 years, but it's not just California. The Hawaiian Islands are covered with our patients. So is Las Vegas. Uh, if you're sick in any part of that of the country, actually, you probably want to get your care at University of California. So one of the themes that's you know rising here at LSI is the we're a lot of medical device folks here. I'm a medical device guy myself. So you know, but we're starting to see where even back in you know maybe eight to ten years back, you began to say, well, let's there's going to be data that's going to come off the device. So there was at least some sensitivity to that. But now we're starting to see it's not only the data, but there's a software package. And then there's this virtuous feedback loop. So how do you see UC, you know, the UC system able to sort of implement this collecting data, understanding it, feeding it back into the system? Do you have that kind of integration? Yeah, so let's, let's dive, dive in a little bit deeper there for a second. There's data coming off the devices, and then there's data about the device, right? And let's just talk about data about the device first. Because when we treat any patient for anything, we have to order it in the electronic health record today. And we use Epic. And so that means every dose of every drug, every device, every screw that goes into every kit that's installing every single piece of bone hardware or whatever you want is ordered in Epic. So we have a masked record of all of those and all the outcomes because that's what we track. Uh, so that's the legal medical record all sitting there waiting for some interesting questions. I just wanna really highlight this point. For a lot of things that we do in medicine, for example, inpatient care, we're mostly paid the same amount, no matter what. It's pre-negotiated, it's a DRG. So anything we do excessively, that cost is on us. We're paid the same amount. So now all of a sudden, it's really in our interest to use all of this data we've captured to figure out, is there some other way to treat this patient that might cost us less at, while maintaining or improving the outcomes? It's absolutely critical to bring that point up, right? We don't wanna harm patients at all. We want them to do even better but is there another alternative here that we should be thinking about? And the beauty of the UC system is we have all of this natural experimentation going on. We have many surgeons, we have many docs trying different things, and we have all of those strategies essentially captured in the electronic health record. But since you brought up patients, I also wanna bring up an important point. A lot of people in the space of data and interoperability keep thinking it's very hard for health systems to share data with each other. They keep thinking it's hard for us to share data with patients. And I always wanna make sure viewers or listeners and any audience know that we as health systems are constantly giving them data, okay? One example of this, many of your listeners or viewers might have an iPhone and you can go to the health app and most people ignore it because they're not interested in tracking sleep and steps, but in there is health records and you can literally just put in the user ID and password that your hospital system has given you and zoop, all that data goes into your iPhone. But if you get care at five or six or 10 places, you see one timeline of all of that data, lab test data, the procedures. We've been giving data to patients. Most of my neighbors in Silicon Valley still think it hasn't been done. Uh, yeah, we've solved that problem. And by the way, it's federal law now that we have to do that. Um, so a lot of those problems have been solved. Long way to go, but we enable patients using federal standards and give them their data, absolutely. So it's not just about us knowing those patients better. We want to make sure they know us better too. Oh, that's, a, I, I did not know that. Most people don't. Yeah, that's amazing. Even the tech neighbors uh, that I live and work around. <laughs> so a lot of the things that we're hoping happen, they've already happened. They've kind of already happened, uh, especially on the patient data sharing side. Now, the, the, the aficionados will always find flaws in how we're doing this, but we're using federal standards. And again, Apple doesn't care what the records are. They don't keep a record. They just show it to you on the phone. Uh, we know many people have Android as well, so we've solved that problem ourselves for Android, making an equivalent there. But we want to make sure, before we do anything with our data, we want to make sure patients are enabled by it first. So when you, one of the areas where uh, you know, clinical data is becoming so important in clinical trials right. and really trying to change those models, you, know, you look at, um, I use like the Oslo manual, by definition of innovation, right? Business methods can also be innovative. And the way we're looking at clinical trials 
Is the UC system going to be participating and in, in sort of shaking up the way that clinical trial data is collected? Yeah, okay. So UC uh, obviously runs trials. I think at any moment we have uh, 5,000 active trials in the entire University of California health system. Um, more, to, more or less about 5,000 active trials. Um, now, we all, all of our centers do trials like everyone else. What's new are going to be UC-wide trials. So when a trial is launched at one site, can we co-recruit from the other sites as well? Where that's going to make a difference are going to be the rare diseases. It's going to be the rare cancers that have, when you need to recruit a patient that has a particular DNA misspelling in their cancer. There might be only 10, but we're going to have all 10, right? Uh, it's going to be uh, other rare conditions that need the rarest of devices being used. Um, we're going to be able to do that UC-wide. That's going to be new. And so I think more folks are going to want to think about using us for trials. The diversity of the world lives in California and is treated by the University of California, okay? We treat some of the patients in the most richest and poorest zip codes of California, okay? We know that, especially... Uh, and poor can mean poor rural or poor, poor urban, and we have both of those, right? We treat homeless patients. We, we have every extreme here. So race, ethnicity, language, sex, reals. We know race, ethnicity, language, and sex on all of our patients. We know where they live. We geocode that to figure out at least what their neighborhoods might be like, what unique challenges every patient has, and we use that to guide what, how we can treat them. Now, for trials, you're absolutely right. We need to get more patients in trials we need to get more diversity of patients in trials. And I have full respect and uh, admire CVS and Walgreens for doing this, but they're not gonna install a hip joint in someone. They're not gonna put a stent in someone at a CVS. That's the kind of thing we would do, right? And so we certainly wanna have more diversity in our trial participants, and we, we have actively recruit in that type of way, but because we track all of this. Um, so for us, it's not just about running the trials. Sometimes trials are the, are the only way to bring the latest technologies to our patients that might have no other hope. And so uh, in some ways we, we have to, that is what we do at academic medical centers. We, we have to run clinical trials. Actual abuse.